It, it is funny to hear people be excited about T-bills. And we started to see that in September, October of last year was when we were starting to get those questions. And um, we're getting incoming calls and emails about what's the rate on T-bills or CDs. Uh, the, feds, the feds made these really attractive. And we did mention that I think on, on our last video about how that may be a, a contrarian indicator. And that has proven to be true. The, the stock market has outperformed T-bills uh, over that the last three months. So let's just call it the last three months. And, and, and you're right, sentiment has not changed. I, people are not more excited or bullish. If anything, I think they're more nervous for whatever reason. They've heard that the, the Fed's not done and there's more, all the headlines seem to be not more bearish than they were, but just as bearish. Um, you know, there's this second shoe that's going to drop and there's just an emphasis that this risk-free rate of return is still very attractive. And to me, that, that remains a contrarian indicator, I think, that uh, people who lock up a meaningful portion of their net worth in these still relatively low yielding instruments are going to be, I don't want to say disappointed because they know what they're going to get, but I think they're going, there's going to be opportunity cost. I think funds will be rewarded elsewhere more. So that's, that's, that's my way of looking at it. And, and we do still hear, people are still under the impression that we're in a rising rate environment. Uh, for what, you know, obviously we have a limited audience here, but um, interest rates are, are not going up. The Fed funds rate is going up and it may go up further next week when the Fed announces what's probably or possibly going to be their final rate hike uh, of this cycle. And, but the long end of the curve has come down meaningfully. The 10-year and the 30-year Treasury are significantly lower than they were three or even six months ago, which to me, that's, those are the, the relevant interest rates to be watching. That's what, um, when corporations borrow money, they're issuing long-dated bonds. Those are based on the 10 or 30-year Treasury, not the Fed funds rate. And the same is the case for mortgages. I think there's multiple contributing factors, and I don't know that there's a way to assign, you know, percentages to, to what's what's affecting it the most. But there, there's first thing is that last year, and we pointed this out a number of times. Last year was an anomaly with stocks and bonds both falling uh, double digits together. It's very rare. It's, it's happened, but you know, a couple of times since the Great Depression. So that's that's a huge contributing factor because there's value in all asset classes that, that trade publicly. Um, so that's a contributing factor. There's just, at some point, things fall enough where there's money that's interested. Uh, and then you brought up tax loss harvesting or tax loss selling, which towards the end of last year, anybody who had bought pretty much anything in the previous 18 months probably had some tax losses that they could take advantage of. And so there was some selling uh, the end of the mutual fund fiscal year, which is at the end of October, um, and then the end of everybody else's fiscal year at the end of December, there's these different rounds of tax loss selling, which probably happened at the end of last year. So I think those, which means that people are dumping positions that maybe they don't want to get rid of, but they can take advantage of a tax loss to either offset gains somewhere else or harvest them for future years. It's a super useful uh, tool to use, which and we used it quite a bit last year. Um, but if those people were selling for that purpose, then most likely they're bookmarking um, 31 days out into the future with the hopes of re-entering those positions. So that that would put some buying pressure on on those those stocks or those asset classes. So that's that could be a contributing factor. And then all of a sudden, at the same time, we've got slightly easing fears about inflation, therefore Fed hikes. Um, so yeah, we've got these all these contributing factors, which are sort of, I think, all responsible for this bottoming process that we've seen in stocks over the last several months. Uh, we maintain, or I maintain, that that stocks bottomed in October. October was a retest of the June lows, and so assets have started to recover, um, which doesn't mean that they're going to go racing back to all-time highs and interest rates back to all-time lows, 
but it, it, there is this a little bit of a, you know, is it safe to get back in the pool? It, it, it's safe in the sense that there's always going to be some risk when you invest your capital, but it feels like there's uh, a more balanced risk now, where, where there's sufficient upside from current levels um, to, to warrant putting some money to work. It's, so, it's such a good question. It's like what separates the bulls from the bears. You know, the, these data points where, the, are these mass layoffs? I mean, 10,000 people sounds like a lot of people, and I don't want to sound cavalier. It's unfortunate when anybody loses their job. Um, those are big numbers when you, when you think about, you know, just how many people that is. But these are enormous companies. And... Um, yeah, I, I think it could probably be described as trimming the fat. Uh, you know, these companies definitely were, were spending frivolously when times were good and hiring and hiring and, and perhaps some of that hiring was needless or maybe it was just like, hey, these are ventures that we're interested in. They're not critical to, to our, our core business, but we're interested in venturing out into these uh, various other businesses. and. Uh, they're having to trim some of that right now. And the question becomes, do they have to financially or are they simply trying to send a signal to the market that, hey, we understand that the market is concerned that we're overspending and that we need to kind of tighten our belts and now we're watching stocks recover as a result of that and then the cycle kind of resets. So if I'm if I'm bearish, which I'm not, uh, I would I would look at it as, hey, these companies are in trouble and this is going to be the first of multiple rounds of layoffs. It could be, but it also may not be. You know, these companies are still, they're so resilient and they, they're, they're, they represent technology that we need, that we use every day. So uh, I'm personally preferring to look at it as these stocks, these companies have, have caught wind of what the market is, is telling them, they're listening and they recognize that they're a publicly traded stock. Money market um, assets are at a record high and there's a couple re obvious reasons. One, there's fear of, of the stock market and maybe even fear of the bond market. And, and rates are reasonable for money market holders. So it makes sense that there would be a record level of cash sitting in money market funds. Is that an indication? Yes to me clearly, um, because all of that money has flowed out of other asset classes, stocks and bonds. It, it moves out of that and into cash. And then those two asset classes recover. You don't need to be invested in stocks for them to go up. So all of this money that's sitting on the sidelines um, is, is at the moment missing out. And so this is how the, the FOMO, the fear of missing out sort of gets created is these people have put their money away for a month, three months, six months, a year, and it's sitting in cash earning three and a half, four percent, but it's taxed. So, you know, they're sitting and watching the market recover a little bit and they're starting to say, ah, did I make a mistake with that money? Yeah, depending on what percentage of your net worth it is. So, um, yes, it is an indication. The, the, the follow-up question is, does that money need to, to flow back into these other assets in order for them to, to make the next move higher? Probably, yeah. There's only so far that, that assets can, can recover in price without actually getting some net flows. So the answer is yes, and I think that could happen over the next few months. I mean, we, need to, we do need to get some positive economic data, too. Uh, the fact that employment is still pretty strong, is, is, that's good. Housing seems to be recovering. I mean, there was so much fear about housing last year because mortgage rates spiked, and somehow housing is, is resilient. So there's some good news there too. Um, if we continue to, to see inflation move down for, downward meaningfully, it could end up being a good year for, for assets, stocks and bonds. And by good, you know, we could get double digit returns and still be well below former all time highs. So, you know, keeping things in perspective. It's a, it's a great question. I think it's not being discussed too much. And I think probably retail investors are completely unaware that foreign stocks are outperforming U.S. stocks. And it's been going on for a while. Um, 
what also needs to be discussed in the same conversation is that they underperformed for a very long time. I think the reason that they sort of bottomed and have recovered so much off of their lows last year is that inflation was an issue for them before it was an issue for us. So they're a little bit ahead of us in terms of getting inflation under control or having it, you know, just sort of uh, move move down. And we're still dealing with that. So I think the U.S. is, is considered behind the curve on the inflation game. And so foreign stocks have, have started to outperform. And then there's the, the other factor, which is currency. So the U.S. dollar peaked several months ago and is now uh, 10, 12 percent off its highs. That helps foreign stocks and foreign economies because all of those companies and countries that borrowed in U.S. dollars, um, which they do because the, there's just a lot more borrowing capability when you're borrowing in dollars, um, when the dollar starts to weaken, it strengthens your ability to repay that debt in the future. So it sort of strengthens your balance sheet without you having to do anything. So there's, there's that. Um, and I, I think those are really it. You know, I don't, I don't know that there's real strong economic fundamentals over there relative to over here. I mean, you, we've heard that China is just reopening and yet their stock market is rallying for three months. Uh, I think it's just people looking forward. The people are, are, are now willing to look forward um, and, and put money to work anticipating better days ahead. So it's almost like a year ago we were kind of talking ourselves collectively into a recession and it feels like now we're collectively talking ourselves into a recovery. That, that's the, the best way I can describe what this feels like. In, in a short, as short and succinct as I can do it, what could go right? Um, in, inflation under control. I, I think people are starting to, uh, to accept that, that inflation has come down. Energy prices have come down. The Fed is in its final innings of, of the hiking cycle. That's one thing that could go right if, if that continues. Uh, two, uh, earnings, corporate earnings come in better than feared. I, I think there was last year just purely based on movements in the stock market, people were worried that earnings were going to be bad. They may be, but maybe they're not as bad as feared. Uh, or maybe they're even just okay. That would be a, a positive development after a year like last year. And, and right now, you know, we're hearing all about the debt ceiling. So, and I got a question about it yesterday. I, I think most likely that gets resolved as these have been resolved for the past decade. Um, there will be some fighting and some squawking and then they will agree on some spending cuts over here in, in favor of uh, raising the debt ceiling temporarily. Um, I, I, I think that's generally speaking a nothing burger. So I, I think there's opportunity for um, a lot of things to go right just in the absence of things going wrong from this point forward. So I think there's I think we're actually in a decent spot.